Hi, Dr. Matthew Weiner from Commerce, Michigan, author of the book A Pound of Cure. I'm also a weight loss surgeon performing gastric bypass and sleeve gastrectomy operations. Here to talk to you about a very common question on a lot of people's minds these days, which is, should I have bariatric surgery or not? Bariatric surgery is increasing in, in popularity. There's now millions of people who've had these procedures, and I think there's probably many more millions who are contemplating it. And uh, a lot of patients come to my office and still are not convinced one way or the other whether or not this is the right choice for them. And I'm here to offer you a few tips that may uh, help to lend some clarity to this decision so that you can make the right decision. What I found is that this, these surgeries in a patient who is having it performed at the right time in their life, with the appropriate outlook and perspective on things in terms of what the surgery is going to do and what it's not going to do is an incredibly powerful tool. And it's without question the best thing that physicians have ever been able to offer people in order to lose weight. But it is a big decision. It is a major life decision. It is up there with your decision about whether or not to get married and who you marry, whether or not you have children, how many children you have, where you live, what type of job you do. These are huge decisions that very few people take casually, and I think bariatric surgery needs to be placed within the same category because it will change your life forever. There's no question about it. We have to figure out how we can make sure that it changes your life for the better. I would say at least 90 to 95 percent of my patients will report their surgery as the single best decision they've made in a long time. And I'm here to help offer you some tips so that we can, fig we can help you um, be one of those patients. And if you're not one of those people, if you're not ready for surgery, it's absolutely critical that you don't move forward because you're going to miss your one chance. With bariatric surgery, you really have one chance to get it right. And if you miss out on that opportunity, if you let it pass without making all the changes that are necessary so that you can be healthy for the rest of your life, you're going to miss out on that one golden opportunity. So before we start to talk about whether or not you should have bariatric surgery, let's take a step back and look at the ways that, it's po that, that you can lose weight, that's, that, that are, you're able to lose weight. There's really three ways in my mind. There's nutritional change, not dieting, not restricting the amount of food you eat, but changing the type of food you eat. There's exercise. In my mind, not treadmill and elliptical type of things, but uh, aggressive weightlifting, boot camp classes, really hardcore intense ex exercise. We refer it often as high intensity interval training, but, but the gist is, is that it's a, it's a very vigorous exercise rather than a low to moderate cardiovascular exercise. And then finally, bariatric surgery. So we have to ask the right question. We have to ask, is bariatric surgery necessary in order to lose weight? When you, when, if you have a lot of medical illnesses related to your weight, and you're 50, 100, or more pounds overweight, of course, it's obvious that you need to lose weight. But that's not the question we have to ask when we're de deciding whether or not we have to have bariatric surgery. We have to ask ourselves, is bariatric surgery necessary for weight loss? Because nutritional change in exercise has essentially a 0% complication rate. And although we're in the low single digit for the, the serious complication rates for bariatric surgery, it is not zero. And that's an important thing that I talk to all my patients about. And it's an important thing for you to understand going, going forward. We've managed to improve the safety of this procedure astronomically over the last five to 10 years. But it is still not as safe as nutritional change in exercise is. So in order to um, figure out this whole, this whole question, it's first important to talk about how you lose weight and, how you, and, and what's necessary to, to, to achieve our goals. So the problem that we've had over the last 20 years is that we have turned weight loss into a mathematical science where it's simply a matter of burning more calories than you expend, and, and burning, sorry, burning more calories than you take in. And if we can just fix this simple formula by bending our mind and adjusting our will so that we eat less, and, and burn more calories that will drive the weight off. And it's just our decision and it's our own inability to, to, um, to control our eating habits and to, uh, to exercise enough to lose weight that, that have caused this problem. But in fact, we find that this is so much more complex than this. The human body does not work on simple math. It's a biologic system and biologic systems have feedback. And what we find is when you do simple starvation techniques by restricting the amount of calories that you take in that your body compensates by increasing your hunger and decreasing your metabolism. 
And simple restrictive techniques by decreasing portion size, by switching to prepackaged low calorie meals, switching to diet soft drinks, uh, and trying to exercise the weight off on the treadmill, essentially starving the weight off is an ineffective way to lose weight. And, and if we're going to ask ourselves, can we do it without surgery, we have to at least choose a, a, a technique that is going to work, that we have a reasonable chance of not just losing the weight for three or six months through some starvation technique, but really changing your body, your body's set point. I call this whole um, uh, process your metabolic thermostat. And it describes how when you do restrict your calorie intake, your body doesn't sit there silently. It protests and it tries to get you back to that set point that's a little bit higher. And if we're going to succeed with weight loss, we have to move your set point from a higher setting down to a lower setting. And the way that you can achieve this through nutritional change is not by restricting your calorie intake, because that just stretches the rubber band from one side to the other and, um, from your set point, but by moving your set point, by changing the content of your diet, from changing it from our, our um, high animal protein, high um, bread and grain diet, of largely of processed foods, to a much more natural fruit and vegetable and nuts and seeds uh, and bean-based diet with a little bit of animal protein here and there, as we describe in, in A Pound of Cure, will be able to actually move that set, pound, set point lower in a, in a large portion of patients. And so if you're going to say, well, I can't lose weight with, with dieting, I think it's important that you have tried a program where you actually change the type of food you eat, not the amount, to move that set point to a lower level. And, and if that doesn't work, which without question, it does not work in everyone. And I think that's an important thing for, that a lot of people don't understand. They think that obesity is simply a matter of restricting your food intake and that it's possible for everyone who's overweight to lose weight by changing their diet. When in fact, that is without question not true. There is a very large subset of, of, of people who are overweight or obese in this country who no matter how they change their diet, they are unable to lose weight. And that's really where bariatric surgery holds a very prominent role, is in this group of patients. I found that these, this group of patients is a pleasure to work with. They do exceptionally well after surgery and I think have very realistic expectations and go into the surgery uh, with a very good mindset. So here's a little laundry list of, of people who I think are likely to succeed without surgery versus those who are likely to require surgery. So the first item on the list, if you have a minimal family history, if there's very few people in your family who are overweight, uh, I think you have a much better chance because that to me says that, that your genetics are, are less um, driven against you or less are working against you, uh, less than someone whose entire family is overweight. When you see an entire family of overweight individuals, what it says to me is that their genes are very sensitive to processed foods and when they eat even small amounts of processed foods, they're stored as fat and, and becomes very difficult for them to lose weight uh, for that reason. So if if you don't have a genetic predisposition toward obesity, I think you have a much greater chance of losing weight through nutritional change and exercise than if your family is all overweight. On a similar note, the age that you start to develop obesity also has an has a important role. If you were overweight as a child, that to me, especially um, and people in their 40s and 50s who didn't grow up in this very toxic food environment that we have going on right now, uh, if you were overweight as a child 20 or 30 years ago, then the chances are is that there's something about your physiology, even if you don't come from a, a family of overweight individuals, there's something about your unique physiology that lends itself toward fat storage and it's going to be very difficult for you to lose the weight successfully. If you gained your weight later in life, then chances are that there is no physiologic predisposition toward weight gain and you're going to be much in a much more phys, uh, a favorable position to, to lose the weight. Believe it or not, I actually like it when patients come to my office who eat a, a diet that consists largely of processed foods. And as kind of contrary to, to what you might expect uh, that sounds, it says to me, we have a lot of room. So if you are eating fast food on a regular basis, if you are drinking soda pop, one, two, three um, uh, cans a day, and eat um, primarily a processed diet, 
I look at that as an opportunity to make significant change because our program with all the fruits and vegetables is actually delicious and once you kind of get into the swing of things and learn how to do this, you make a major substantial change in the content of your diet and very often we achieve 75, 100 pounds of weight loss, the same amount that we would achieve with surgery without ever having to take the patient to the operating room. So when I see a patient who comes into me with a, with a, with a diet that, that is certainly not an, an ideal um, uh, a diet, we're going we're gonna to work very hard on nutritional change and, and a lot of these patients are able to lose the weight without the surgery. However, if you come to me with already a very good diet, eating lots of fruits and vegetables, um, beans and nuts and minimizing processed foods and very few sweets and no soda pop, there's not a lot of changes that I can make. And this to me is a patient who's already made substantial changes to the content of their diet. Their diet is not really that toxic and that fattening and so there's not a lot that I can offer that person in terms of nutritional change. Um, and exercise has certainly much less ability, especially as you get older, to drive weight loss compared to um, changing the food that you eat. So in these group of people, people who come in with a good diet, I find they're actually really well prepared for bariatric surgery because bariatric surgery requires that you have a good diet for the rest of your life. And then the final group, and this is a very, very important factor that, that we always um, uh, talk to patients about, is the, the, the dreaded plateau. And I think anybody who's tried to lose weight unsuccessfully has, has encountered this, where you'll lose weight effect, very effectively for the first few weeks or even few months, but ultimately you'll hit this point where despite not changing your behavior, the weight loss stops. And this really is you kind of reaching the end of that, that metabolic thermostat where your body is now starting to revolt against the, the starvation. And uh, what in my mind that says is we're not actually moving the set point with our uh, healthier diet, with our, with our change in, our, uh, in the nutrition but we're just stretching against it. And to me that says that this patient is, gonna, is resistant to set point movement because it's around 10% that we start to see the appetite increase dramatically, the metabolism slow down, and the weight loss comes to a halt. If you have a history of being able to lose well more than 10% of your body weight loss, especially on something like an Atkins diet where you do actually change the type of food you eat. As much as I don't really support the Atkins diet and, and that's not what we, we, we promote in our program, it is without question a change in the type of food you eat and patients who've lost in the past a lot of weight on the Atkins diet, to me that says their, their set point is still mobile. It still is elastic. It can change. It can lower. And we may be able to achieve weight loss without surgery. So again, to summarize, success without surgery depends on changing the content of your diet, not on changing your portion size. And very interestingly, success with surgery also is critically dependent on you changing the content of your diet. And this is something that I really work with my patients on um, very aggressively, that if you are able to to um, focus on portion control after surgery. It's very easy. This is something that comes naturally by making the stomach smaller or narrow in the case of a sleeve, that portion, uh, it, patients are able to eat very small portions. However, what happens is that over time, and we'll go over that in just a, a few minutes, we'll see that these portions can increase. And so by, by focusing on eating the same type of heavily processed food, just smaller amounts, you'll get that initial weight loss from the surgery. But if you're going to succeed long term, it's got to be more than just changing the portion. It has to be changing the type of food that you eat. A question I get all the time is if I can't change my habits without surgery, how is surgery going to be any different? And I think this is where this neurohormonal Im uh, uh, impact of surgery comes in. And I have a, a video on, the, on my YouTube channel called How Bariatric Surgery Really Works that goes into more details about this. But what we find is when we operate by either removing a portion of the stomach or rerouting the intestines in the case of a gastric bypass to change the signals that the food sends to the brain through the gut, that we find that there is a dramatic change in not just your appetite and your drive for food, but the type of food that you prefer. And this is a, um, a very, very important um, component that, that a lot of people don't understand is that after bariatric surgery, 
you're going to be able, you're going to have a, a, a strong preference for fruits and vegetables. And heavily processed foods, sweetened foods, really become slightly nauseating initially and ultimately you really don't have a very strong appeal or drive for these foods. And so the surgery itself actually changes, changes your uh, attitude about food and your taste preferences. And that is, to me is something that uh, I con it continues to amaze me and, and makes it a, a real natural fit for our, our um, raw um, uh, whole foods approach to, to weight loss. So our standard approach at the Michigan Weight Management Institution is that we, tr we um, offer a trial of nutritional change. And even though I've listed some factors about who I think does well with surgery and who might not do well with surgery, uh, only with, with a, a, an actual trial of doing it can we really figure out the answer to that. Um, so we, we work with patients on changing their nutrition and we see what happens. Can, the, can you exercise vigorously? If you can exercise vigorously, great, we're going to be able to, to put that in place. But if you can't, exercise is probably not going to have a su substantial impact on your weight loss. Um, does the weight come off easily? For me, if you're going to succeed, the weight, you ha you ha two things have to happen. Number one, the weight has to come off really easily. And number two, you have to like the diet because this is going to be the way you eat for the rest of your life. If you change your, your your nutrition back to the processed foods, you're gonna, your body's gonna go back to the old weight. And so I look for patients who say, I love eating all these vegetables, and have you tried this dish and that dish, and I, I went shopping here and I made this kind of set point smoothie. These are all things to me that, that are the marker of someone who's gonna succeed without surgery. Do they, do, do they plateau? Do they move along very nicely and then they hit this 10% of your total body weight mark and all of a sudden the weight loss comes to a grinding halt. When we see that, that to me is very concerning and I wonder whether we're going to be able to achieve success with this patient. And, and uh, most importantly, the patients who come in and are ready to change their life. And what I found is that if you're in my office and we're discussing rearranging or removing a portion of your intestine in order to drive weight loss and a healthier lifestyle, that this is a very critical moment in your life that when you're willing to go through this you are willing to change and we have to take this surgery and not just change your anatomy but change the way you view food and change your outlook on how you're going to live your life going forward and if we don't just make this about one surgical procedure but make this about a major change in everything you do on a day-to-day -day basis, a major life decision, then we find patients who are really going to succeed beyond even their wildest imagination. So I think once we go through all this, we can answer the question of, of should this patient undergo bariatric surgery? You'd like to find out more about our program, you can come to our website at www.drmatthewiner.com, visit our Facebook page at A Pound of Cure, uh, or our YouTube channel, uh, and of course our book is available on Amazon. Thank you.